All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 147 pound division where a very prominent boxer, Hall of Fame boxer, makes some comments and warns by way of a statement Terrence Crawford and the people that are out there talking real loose about Errol Spence Jr., about this rematch, and pretty much says, Look, don't get cocky now. You don't know how that next one's going to go. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And this in this video, we are once again going to be in the 147 pound division, the welterweight division, glamour division in boxing. They just had one of the biggest fights or one of the most anticipated fights that we've had in a long time between Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford for the undisputed welterweight championship. Terrence Crawford won the fight. Now, Errol Spence Jr. has exercised the rematch clause. And there is talks, obviously, about the fight taking place could very well be taking place in the early part of, 20, uh, of 2024. I don't think it'll be taking place in December, but early 2024 sounds something like it's a little bit more re realistic, provided that Errol Spence Jr. Uh, goes along with, I'm quite sure, well, no, I'm not quite sure. I suspect a myriad of new requirements out of Terrence Crawford to get the fight done. Now, Bernard Hopkins, Hall of Fame fighter, middleweight, one of the greatest middleweights of my lifetime, uh, right up there with uh, the great Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Matter of fact, other than Marvelous Marvin Hagler in the 1980s, I don't know if there's a middleweight that you can say is like Bernard Hopkins or as great as Bernard Hopkins. Obviously, there was Roy Jones Jr. that passed through the division. Um, he, though, uh, Bernard Hopkins, gives his two cents in an interview, and I thought it was very interesting and poignant. Now, before I get into that, though, the details of that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much. This video is going to go out to my guy, John Bowie. Hope you're doing well, sir. Um, also, shout out to everybody else. Uh, Paul Carrick. Thank you, sir unadulterated truth what's going on with you thank you to everybody that's out there support man uh ashley's corner and bftv boxing anybody and everybody that has been a supporter of the channel and watching the channel for a while that um that supports the channel thank you uh now let's get into this because uh people are behaving as if errol spence jr uh and terrence crawford is a foregone conclusion and that Errol Spence Jr., because of the fashion in which he lost to Terrence Crawford, has no chance whatsoever to win the fight. Depending on what level, what aspect they're coming from, you're hearing a lot of different things. Or I'm hearing a lot of different things. You have people that are really, really going to ride with Errol Spence Jr., support Errol, saying, look, man, I support Errol. Errol is going to get in there. He's going to be a different fighter than he was last time. Because that's what is going all around about Errol not necessarily being what he was before. Then you have people on the other far extreme saying Errol is going to die. Excuse me. I hope I hate saying that. I hate even bringing that in the universe. Errol is going to sustain career ending injuries if he dares to get in the ring with him. So don't do that. Right. Uh, but in the middle, you have somebody like Bernard Hopkins. And I got to tell you, man, the further we get away from the initial predictions for Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, um, and the more you uh, you listen to like the really well established you know, Hall, Hall of Fame boxers, the more you realize, man, these guys really know boxing. Whether you agree with them or not, agree with them. I've always known that that was the case, but sometimes say some things where the pill is a little hard to swallow, especially when it comes from guys like uh, Oscar De La Hoya, who I know knows what he's talking about, but I don't believe he's actually telling you what he thinks. In this case, Bernard Hopkins says, "Look, man." There could easily be a third fight between Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford. Could easily be a third fight because uh, Errol Spence Jr. could turn the fight around and perform significantly better in the third fight than the first fight. There are different, and here's my thing about it: 
right? Without going on. Now, that uh, interview, I do believe, is on Fight Hub, so you can look at it for yourself. My thing is this, that um, there is a book that, shout out to Luda Bella, too, because Luda Bella had, um, had uh, suggested this book for in boxing. It's called Everything in the Ring was, is Square. Everything in the Ring is Square. Oh, sorry. Everything, the only thing, the only thing square was the ring, something like that. But basically, the title of the book was the first of all it was written by a matchmaker, the head matchmaker for Madison Square Garden during the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And he would talk about he and being the matchmaker, he's the guy that is responsible for organizing fights. And one of the things that he said was, I don't care what the outcome was of a previous fight, I will never tell you what I. I know who's going to win a fight until the day of the fight. And when you hear somebody tell you how they're feeling that day, because and he brought up several examples of a fighter where one guy got handled very, very easily in the first fight. And they didn't even want to make the rematch for for the second fight. And But in the second fight, when he was in the locker room and he heard the guy say, uh, he said, man, look, I'm telling you, this guy's not. He said he's not feeling well. Say, like, how do you feel today, champ? Um, I don't feel right. I don't feel good. I don't feel right. And then though he went into the fight, and they the fight was so one side of the other direction that people thought that the fix had to be in for the fight. Also, you had the situation. He also laid out a scenario where he, when he was talking about um, uh, Muhammad Ali versus Cassius Clay. And how he was in the locker room for uh, not Muhammad Ali versus Sonny Liston or Cassius Clay versus Sonny Liston. And how he was in the ring for not in the ring, in the locker room for that. And how Sonny Liston was saying to Joe, Joe Lewis. Now, I don't know, champ. I don't know, man. I don't really I don't I don't really feel good. I don't feel right. And so he didn't feel right. And he went out there and he lost. It. So he lost the fight, obviously, to, to Cassius Clay, who was later known as Muhammad Ali. And those are examples of, you know, what happens that actual day. Now, if you go back to the Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford fight one, Errol Spence Jr. said he felt he said exactly that in the weigh in. He they said, how do you feel? And he said, man, I feel good. He said, man, I can't even lie. No, nah, I, I feel terrible. Making this weight has been terrible. It, I don't feel right. That's what he said, along with a whole bunch of people saying that he doesn't look right. So there is precedent in boxing of dramatic changes in between fights. So just bringing that up with Bernard Hopkins is another example of him just showing that what his expertise is and his understanding in boxing. Because look, man, it's a different day, different day, different type of situation. And people dismiss as excuses what went on with Er with, with Errol Spence. But I and I've been saying this to everybody that says it. That's you dismissing it. Doesn't mean reality is going to dismiss it just because you don't want to hear it. You can cover up your ears and not want to hear anything. Doesn't make it not true. You know what I mean? But anyway, so we'll see. I just thought that that was very interesting uh, thing for Bernard Hopkins to say. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces. <laughs>